everybody. We are the History Boys. I'm Christopher Whedon, and I, as always, am a history boy. I'm Tyler Armitrout, a uh, history boy, and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I, it's, it's a new year. I don't I don't really have any, I don't have any ammunition yet. This year's been tough. <laughs> fuck 2021. I'm saying go right to yeah. 2020. Yeah, yeah, let's just skip over the whole thing. It's already, it's already, it's a wash already. It's a wash. It's, it's just a shame to see... So many of your friends and family in the news, people, <laughs> people that you worked with at Applebee's, people that you cared about, and you're seeing them, they have Viking hats on or whatever. And I stormed the Capitol, I'm sorry. Yeah, and it's like... <sighs> I didn't do that. <laughs> FBI, please, don't follow me. And you're like, I guess I gotta get a new therapist now. <laughs> Your your therapist stormed the Capitol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> uh, uh, I am uh, Zach the Walking Mess Mech. Uh, the Walking and, uh, Mech Mech. Me- oh. Yes, the Walking Mech Mech. No, the Walking I thought that, Mess I thought that's what you were Mech. Uh, because I am just a, a, a shambling uh, mess of a human being. It's great. And also a history boy. Mm. Ah. Happy New Year, everyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to season two. We're getting fucking weirder and weirder. Yeah, you thought we were weird before. A bipedal mech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I am Jerry Nash, history boy. Thank you for listening. We're back at ya. Woo! For, Woo. I guess, yeah, season two, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have back like scoliosis or back like herpes? Uh, like herpes. Both. Like herpes. They just keep coming back. Wait, wait, this is season two? This is season yeah. two. I, I guess so. I guess so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, good thing we're not on Netflix, because that would make this the last season of History. (laughs) (laughs) That's because they'd have to pay us more next time. They'd have to go through unions at that point. Today's story is going to... We've talked about this person before. Mm -hmm. We've mentioned him before. And it'll go well with a different story. I'm going to tell you later. Is it it French Pete? Yes. (laughs) Oh, I want the French Pete story. (laughs) How Uh, much he likes to eat pussy. How much pussy he's eaten. How it all started. I can't wait. How yeah. it turns out, French Pete was actually a cannibal, and he just liked eating pussy. I yeah, see. yeah, literally. He st- he started from That's the bottom, okay. worked his way up to the top. He also exactly. ate literal cats. He was a Terrera style character. Yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. Opening his jaw all the way, unhinging it like a snake. Yeah, yeah. Last podcast, they totally listened to our episode. They stole I would it. like to think so. I would like to think that they I'd listened like to our episode on Terrera and then did their own. Yeah, they I'd got like inspired. to think that yeah. everyone at uh, it was last podcast to make sure that uh, they hear this. We're call me out, boys. Ma- make sure everyone knows that the history boys did it first. There's, <laughs> a, there's an infinite number of stories, and it's funny that they chose ours. It's I'm, not that there's a finite number of stories of history and true crime, and sometimes they cross over, and sometimes they don't. <laughs> That is not the case. There's an infinite number, and it just so happens that they chose ours. It's a connection. Just saying. They listened to it, and they're like, I'm such a big fan of those history boys. Yeah. My name is Marcus Parks, and I would really like to yeah. plagiarize this. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That is a joke. The, the only, the only takeaway that For you should For the purposes get... of everyone here, that was, in fact, a joke. Uh, and we I'm... have no idea what the hell uh, those guys are doing, and uh, no, no, we don't I believe do. any I, of that. I know their sources. I know oh. exactly where they got Whoops. that from. Never mind. But, uh, you read the same book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we did. We did. I promise oh, you. Shit. Uh, but, uh, no, no, in all seriousness, we're all very big fans of that show. And that's uh, why we know that they did it. Yeah, so that's exactly. the only takeaway that you need. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, again, like I was saying, we've mentioned this before. It's This story is a trope that's lasted since its inception, presumably. And it is the story of Lucius Quintius Cincinnatus. Ah, Ohio. Or ah. could be actually probably pronounced Kincanatus. Mm. But I'm going to pronounce it Cincinnati because, yes, you're right, the, the city like of Cincinnati, it. Ohio, is named after Cincinnati. I mm. love that Kincinnati huh. chili. They put it on that spaghetti there, don't they? They do. Kinkinati. They do indeed. Yeah. Kincinnati, Ohio. Uh, it totally doesn't look disgusting. Susie loves that kind, by the way, Cincinnati chili. You know what? I probably would eat it. I, I it's pretty good. Really I'm like, bad. I'm a picky eater. And then they're like, do you want to eat I this pile not. of whatever? I'm Dude, like, sure. it's pasta with chili and cheese on the top. Oh, that actually I mean, come good. the fuck off. Yeah. I, I, I haven't had it. that yet, but any of our Cincinnati list, listeners out there, please FedEx us some <laughs> of your Cincinnati chilies. It's just a uh, P.O. box. <laughs> history boys. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just a fucking flat rate box just, just yeah. full of just fucking... Just toss yeah. a lot of it in a cardboard box. Yeah. 
It's this thing is all sticky. The box is soaked to the bone. Yeah. The chili sauce is <laughs> just, just leaking out in one of the corners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cincinnatus was a legendary Roman hero in the early days of the Roman Republic. Cool. So this is before the emperors of Rome. This is before the Roman Empire. This is the Republic. Yeah. Although very little is actually known of the man and his actions nearly 2,500 years ago, nevertheless, he influenced the crux of Enlightenment ideals, making him still relevant today. Nice. So he was the Senate. <laughs> I am the Senate. Well, sort of. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll get into it. You uh, fucking love the Godfather. <laughs> yeah. And much of what we know is legend, told to us by Romans, which is important. So remember that a lot of this is propaganda. Yeah. yeah. It's Roman propaganda, and who knows how much of it is actually real. I'm like, so this guy's really great. It's like the Boudicca stuff. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. We know about it from the Romans, so they're right. like, she was a woman, she was very strong, and they're like, she was shrill, she had all these emails. Oh, I think we great breasts. We though. made an emails joke in the Buddha cap. So yes, we did. Yes, like, we did. Have you seen her parchments? <laughs> yeah, yeah, her parchments. Her parchments. <laughs> but her parchments. So, according to Roman historian Livy, after Romulus founded Rome, he elevated one hundred men, chosen for their wisdom, to the status of senator. Now, these men were declared fathers or patra of Rome, thus creating the highest Roman social class. The patricians. Mm. Ah, the daddies. The yeah. big daddies. Yep, yep, the, the daddies the of the Big daddy realm. <laughs> I am one of the 100 daddies. You can call me Daddy Mick. <laughs> so did they invent the plebes because they had the patricians? Yes. They're like, so yes. we have this new thing that's super high, so we need to invent something super low, and that's the rest of y'all. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Be- because once you would, once you invent someone high, high up on the yeah. social ladder... You also, by way of doing that, invent the lower classes as well. Unrelated, I've decided I am uh, the king of the history boys, and you guys are a level below, because I'm, I'm just calling it right now. Yeah. <laughs> I see. And as long as no one challenges that, it stands. I can't. You called it. Welcome, welcome to history, boys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think you only have one challenger, and that's Andrew. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's coming after me. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be a Roman Civil War style si- situation. Or a Captain America Civil War style situation. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Whatever happened there. But, <laughs> uh, the show is br- uh, brought to you by Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, watch all your favorite shows what? and time, team it up with ESPN and Hulu. And get all get all the shows you like. You like Captain America yeah, or Yoda? Is... You can get them in the same channel. <laughs> Oh my god. Hey, you're good at that. Watch Disney. Hey, 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 hey you, you me... like jerking off to Kim Possible? We got it right there. Do you want to dr- you want to jerk off to Kim Possible but also regular people? Go to Pornhub. They got all the stuff in there. <laughs> so now, descendants of these 100 men would be Rome's nobility for the duration of Rome's history. This cast also included the pontifices or, you know, clergy of priests, whatnot at the time. Also, at the time, only patricians could marry other patricians, making the noble status hereditary and impossible to ascend to. So only daddies could marry other daddies. Yes. Nice. And, uh, nice. But if you were, uh, we'll, we'll kind of get into it. If you were not a patrician, you could never be a patrician. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So, so you're were, just, you're locked out. Yeah. You're locked out. Of the patrician class. It seems fair. It's a big club, <laughs> and you ain't in it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. To quote uh, George Carlin. Yeah. But being a plebe, and then, like, having a patrician's, like, daughter, like, fall in love with you would be so uh-huh, cool. dude. It happens. They'd be like, I shouldn't be here, I shouldn't be here, and it's like, no, you shouldn't. No, oh, dude. <laughs> this it, is the bad part of town. It, it's it's like getting with a Catholic girl, you know? It's yeah. just like, oh. Mm. Yeah. Jesus Ooh. Christ. Billy Joel wrote a song about it. He did. <laughs> <laughs> he was Piano a plebe. Man. He was, he was, he, yeah, he, it was about plebes and patricians. Patrician and... girl. Yeah, da, 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 you're, like, patrician world. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, that's, that's all we're allowed to do. Yeah. So like we said earlier, with the creation of the highest of Roman classes, there had to be creation of a lower Roman class. So the, below the patricians were the equites Ooh. or knights. 
the yeah. equestrian. So, like, uh, anytime I we ever talk about Roman history and I talk about... They were of the equestrian class. They were horses. They were a knight. They were constantly riding horses. <laughs> well, it, I well, mean, like, like Mr. Hand's riding, so, right? That's where centaurs <laughs> come from, yeah. So, in the beginning... Wait, Mr. Hand from South Park? No, Mr. Mr. Hands, the the guy who got the Enum Claw guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I remember that. He, he, he was a equestrian class. Yeah, he was a equestrian class. Big time. Big so, time. <laughs> except he got <laughs> rode by the horse. <laughs> okay, and and the reason why they're called this is because during the formation of Rome, they needed soldiers, right? And the richest ones could afford all the fancy armor and a horse, right? Right. So they were the, you know, the equites because they rode horse, equestrian, right? Imagine being rich enough to afford an armor, like armor and a horse, but not rich enough to not have to go to war. Right. Well, there's, and, and there's also different levels. So there's yeah. like the top level where there's like a guy that can, can afford all the armor, all the weapons, the helmet, the sword, the spear, and the horse. And then there's a the guy who's like, well, I don't got a horse, but I got everything else. And then there's a the guy below that that's like, he doesn't have the breastplate and the helmet, but he has everything else. But you got to buy their and own then shit and then they go keep, to war? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so they keep going down and it's like, you eventually get to a guy like with like a shirt on and like a rock and a sling. Yeah. It's like, I'm yeah. also See, this is, equestrian. This is this why they don't do that anymore, because they only want to send the poor... To it. Right, it, it would just be a, war. It'd just be a bunch of guys with rocks and slings. Yeah, it would work. <laughs> yeah. And, now, and or you're sending the poor to war, which <laughs> they well, don't want to do that. Yeah. Or the rich. I'm sorry. The, yeah, the, the rich, 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 rich dangled war. college over the poor people's heads to make them go to war. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we can't make college free because then nobody will join the army. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will say though, the rock and sling, actually, pretty powerful weapon because a rock coming out of one of those slings. They've tested it, and it's a lot. A, it's a lot like a forty-five shell. Mm. So Rocks a little were made harder sh- back then. <laughs> no, <laughs> the velocity of the rocket. Velocity is... was faster back then. No, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, no. what's the actual facts? Well, I'm they were sorry. they were ta- like they were talking about like you know uh, David and Goliath. Right. How like you know David doesn't have anything. He's just a little boy with a rock. It's like, no, well, dude, yeah, this is a slow-moving guy in full armor, and he basically shot a forty-five out of him and killed him instantly. Yeah, it's, it's like, it, there's nothing surprising about that. My, my, my <laughs> understanding know? about that is the fact that uh, David won because of technology. And, well, and, and, and even though that is very primitive technology, yeah, well, technology it's, nonetheless. Oh, I get it. For well, the time, yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, the thing is, is, is this guy standing in this, you know, fancy armor with a fancy sword and all these things... But if you if you just know how to use your weapon right, yeah, you can win. Right. That that's all it really proves. I don't know how much those I mean. helmets could stop a forty five though. No, oh, <laughs> that's no. the point. Like, it, it might even stop if you it, are, but it's going to turn the inside into a. It's it's like a candy shell with a gooey inside. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're Ooh, not going like, to be the like same after you get hit in the head with one of those. Like, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. You're gonna be Cadbury a egg. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. that's or, yeah. or a Milky Way. Yeah. Okay, I'll give yeah, you that. You're a bit of a Milky Way boy. I'm, I'm a bit of a Milky Way boy. Yeah, Do you Zach like the loves nougat. I like the dark chocolate. Is nougat in I'm Milky all about Way? that dark chocolate too. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys ever have rock fights when you were kids? Yeah. 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 Remember how much that shit yeah. sucked? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> that was before we got airsoft guns, which made it way easier. <laughs> True. <laughs> I come from like a liberal family. We couldn't have like fake pretend guns. I've never got oh, hit the by more it. the more real our guns looked, the better. Yeah. I, got sh- I got shot in the face with a BB gun, and I've gotten hit with paintballs, but I've never got hit by an airsoft rifle. I'd imagine it hurts a lot. I've been hit with paintballs. Uh, yeah. uh, an airsoft rifle or airsoft gun hurts. About the same amount as a BB gun. Yeah. About the Ooh. same amount. Because I, I, yeah. I got shot here, just oh, under just my left under eye. On the, oh, see, the that's bottom fucking lead. painful. Fuck. It, uh, what's that luck, Christmas storyline? Shut your eye. Shut your eye. Literally, oh. handheld CO2 BB gun. One of my, my friend, me, I was razzling with one of my friends. <laughs> one of them grabbed my hoodie, pulled it down over my face. Which actually was a good thing because his brother, for no reason at all, pulled out a fucking CO2 pistol BB gun and just shot me in the face. And I would go, Why Jesus. did you do that? And he goes, I don't know. Funzies. Wow. Yeah. Fucking psychopath. I had a huge <laughs> I had a huge bruise on my eye. Thank God I'm not blind now. <laughs> I I own a couple of airsoft guns, but they were props when we kill them and yeah. I would never actually fired them. So below the equites were the 
plebeians or mm. plebes, Ugh. as you said, or plebs, as you can pronounce it. Wow, ah, people that go on fortune. Uh, <laughs> uh, who are Roman citizens, wealthy or poor, they're Roman citizens. They just don't have all the rights that the others have. Now, below the, the plebes were the slaves, who, of course, had no rights at all. However, it was possible for the owner of a slave to free, or manumissio, in which case they would free the slave and they would become a freedman. Mm. And a freedman has basically all the same rights as a plebeian, but they are called a freedman because they used to be a slave. Yeah. Right? But that's all that really is. And do you ever think that, like, so somebody was, like, had a slave and they're like, just do what I say, I'm going to make you a freedman, and they just dangled that carrot forever? Constantly. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I yeah. assume that happened more often It's like than Nandor not. with uh, Guillermo. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. What we do in the shadows, TV show. Also, if you're a freedman, just try to avoid that conversation. It's like, I'm a plebe, just like you guys, just going about my day, <laughs> doing my things. Yeah. I got my bucket of dirt or whatever they had back then. <laughs> you have your bucket of dirt. <laughs> Let's not talk about how we got here. <laughs> hey, hey, Gordon, aren't you a slave? Nope, I'm a freedman. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it worked. If you were Half not joke. if you were not a Roman citizen and you were a plebeian in their eyes, you had even less rights than a slave. Mm. It was a okay to completely burn your village down and do whatever you wanted with the populace because it didn't matter if you were not a Roman citizen. If you were just like um, cool. You know, barbarian, I guess, is what they call them. They would call them barbarians, or anyone that didn't speak well, Latin. I think at the time, I feel Cincinnatus' I, brother, Cincinnatus, <laughs> did his thing and invented the first census, and he's like, there's like a quarter million of us. That's way too many people. Um, you can kill a bunch of them if they're poor. It's fine. <laughs> now, at Rome's founding, the patrician class, the senators, would vote on a monarch to lead Rome, and this person would be elected for life. This era was known as the Roman Kingdom. As with many monarchies throughout history, power grabs were attempted to make the monarchy hereditary instead of an elected monarchy. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And there was actually, they, they call this era the the kingdom of the seven emperor or oh, seven yeah. kings. Rome's seven kings, although there were certainly more. Was that translated into English from fucking Mandarin? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it just sounds like it was. As somebody who lived in China for five years, I agree. Wasn't there like a, a bunch of kings of Thebes back in the day in Greece as well? Like the seven kings of Thebes or something? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a kind of an old trope. It, we know that there's... I'm just wondering if that most, was what that was kind of referencing. Probably. And that's why they came to that? I don't probably. Know. Just because of all of, the, all of the Greek influence? Probably. Yeah. yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. But unsurprisingly, when people would make these grabs at pop more power than they had at the moment, uh, it would create these civil wars inside of Rome, which was not like the Roman Empire. It was just the little city-state at yeah. this time. It, it wasn't huge at this point just keep that in mind mm -hmm. they're getting there they're well getting so there. so italy italy was actually a bunch of bunch of tribes with different languages and different cultures there was right. the etruscans there was all sorts of them we'll kind of talk about them later um i i'm sure you they're told all us. absorbed Remind me, what time period is this this is we're gonna kind of go because this is way earlier oh but our story is gonna sort of start in like the 460s for BC? Yeah, BC. Wow. Yeah. Oh, cuz yeah, wow. Cuz yeah. Greece is a bigger thing at that point. Yeah, exactly. And they kind of the Grecian influence basically gave Rome its republic basically because okay. they they sent people yeah. they sent people over to Greece to study their government system. Rome was and like then brought it back. The sequel to Greece just bigger and more violent. Yes. Rome yes. wasn't built in a day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good You're job, welcome. Tyler. You are indeed a history boy. Yeah. And that's the end of part one of <laughs> this episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Roll credits. <laughs> um, now, when the last civil war was over, the Senate decided to abolish the monarchy and instead instituted a republic, with the patricians, of course, being at the top. The new title created to replace the administrative and martial duties of the king was the consul, of which there were two elected by the Senate of the patrician class to serve for one year. 
So you'd, you'd, you'd have two consoles for a year, and they would take care of all of all of Rome, basically. For a year? For one year. And they were kind of like, what, were they kind of like Congress people? It would be like if, uh, it would be like if a Senate Majority Leader or a Speaker of the House, like those two. Yeah. If they, if we didn't have a president, it was just those two running uh, the whole country. Oh, Pelosi okay. and McConnell. Yeah, it'd the be like friends. that. Oh, yeah. It'd oh, be like Christ. that. <laughs> that sounds like a recipe for a fucking sitcom. Yeah, well, the odd the couple with I, I, I do want you to McConnell. I do want you to know that nothing has changed since yeah. then. So, two consuls that disagree, you're going to see that here in they, Rome. You see it all the time here. They had a turtle man and a shrill, a, a, a shrill skeleton back then, too. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. They're both terrible. So uh, They would have been men. Though. Okay, they so would not, not Romans remember Romans wouldn't even think of having a woman run any woman, you sexist. Yeah, <laughs> I got you your heard drill, you <laughs> assume woman. And no, you were referencing we real yeah. leaders. <laughs> no, we were referencing Pelosi, and, and we all know it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Christ, Zach put a bell sound effect in there because I got him. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I hear no bell. So the brother of the last king of Rome, Colotinus, and his son Brutus, not that Brutus, I assumed, they became the first consuls of Rome. And they were the ones that basically gave us Republican way of government. Yeah. So like when our founding fathers of the United States got together, they considered what they were doing a Brutus style mm. of okay. Republicanism. So when you when you read like books about the American Revolution or you hear about it and they mention Brutus, they're not talking about Julius Caesar. Yeah. They're talking about this Brutus here. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. He was a way more chill Brutus. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Uh, it was way before. Has, has there been any like American officials that have wanted to subscribe to Colotus's side? What's the name? Colitis, Colotinus. Uh, he he was Colotinus. in the same he he was in the same camp as Brutus. Okay. Well, uh, Col- Colot- well Colotinus was well, Brutus's father. And father. Son. They all collectively decided that they wouldn't have kings anymore. Right. So okay. the whole Senate decided to do this. How many times in history do does a bunch of people get together and go, you know what? How about no more kings? And they're like, you're right, no more kings. And then like a couple years later, they're like, we got a king again. Fuck. Benjamin Franklin well, did well, it. Well, good yeah. thing. Good thing for Rome is they had a long time yeah. as a republic before they had a king again or yeah. a monarch again. Yeah, and he wasn't called that anymore. He was an emperor. He was an emperor. But anyway, shot lightning like, out of his hands. That's like more than a king. I'm jumping. I know it is. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead though. So a set of laws were created for the newly minted Roman Republic, and these were known as the Twelve Tables, and they were written on these bronze tablets. And the actual contents of the 12 tables is lost to history. We don't actually know everything they said. The only reason why we know anything of what they said is because they're referenced in other works later on. Okay, but we don't actually have these tablets or know what they exactly said. Mm. Kind of like the Mormon tablets. I was going to say that too. I was like, plus if you had to it, look at them, you had to look at them through this yeah, fucking stupid it, lens. It, and, yeah, except it changes every you had to, time you, yeah. you had to put on 3D glasses and fucking cross yeah. your eyes and shit. <laughs> except these actually existed and the Mormon golden plates did not yeah. exist. Well, fair enough. Are you calling yeah. Joseph Smith a liar? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's a charlatan. A liar and a con man. Yeah. Yeah. Brigham Young was even worse. Yes. He was a military dictator. That man's a well, a theocratic military dictator. He's a piece of shit. Anyway. Welcome to the Mormon Podcast. <laughs> so, wait, wait. So, uh, is this like uh, better Magna Carta? Uh, well, it's before the Magna Carta. But that's what I said. Well, I mean, it's better, but it's before. But so, it's like the right, I, I know it's it, before. I wouldn't call it better. Similar? I wouldn't even call it similar. Is it better than the Ten Commandments? <laughs> Is it better than the Bill of Rights? <laughs> well, the Bill of Rights is based off of this. Sounds like it. Uh, is it better than sort of? Is it better than the, the single rider policy on the log flumes at Splash Mountain? Disneyland? I will. I will tell you. <laughs> I, I will tell you what it is better than. Is it better than Asimov's like rules for artificial intelligence? I will tell you what so it is. Pretty, super easy to remember. Yeah. I will tell you what it is better than. I don't remember what they are, but it is better. <laughs> Something about hot dogs. It's better than uh, corporate interests making our laws. It's Fair better enough. than that. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Corporate money actually making our laws. It's better than that. 
I didn't have any corporations back then. No, nope. just They're, a bunch of rich people that you could never fucking, fucking talk to. The, fucking the clay pot lobbyists are fucking making it so all of us are poor or whatever. Like <laughs> the they clay didn't pot happen. lobbyists. <laughs> <laughs> The, that kind of happened though. Yeah. Later on, it kind that kind that kind of shit did sort of happen. Not with clay pots, but with consumable things. Anyway, this is in 450, 451 when this happened. Yeah. Okay, and from what scholars can gather, the twelve tablets it was a general set of laws, and it gave more balance of power between the patricians and the plebeians because that had always you know been a thing between the two. You know. And there had been a lot of domestic unrest because of it, and there would still be domestic unrest because of it, as they sort of figured it out. Anyway, that's what what it was made up to sort of do. But it was a less uh, a set of ideals, like our Bill of Rights or anything like that, and more a set of crimes and punishments <laughs> that, that sort of related to them. So, like, for example, arson was punishable by death by burning. Talking out of turn. Cool. That's a paddling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so paddling it was, in the school canoe. Yeah. That's paddling. Yeah. So it, it was like, oh, Hammurabi's we gotta write code. This down. That's what I was thinking. There of. you go. There you go. Hammurabi. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking the code it's of like Jasper. From, ah, Simpsons uh, reference. Simpsons. Simpsons reference. Like, hey, look at that. Season two, Simpsons reference. Boom. One. First episode, <laughs> we did it. Looking at my sandals? That's paddling. That's a paddling. And you can watch every episode of Simpsons on, on Disney, Disney Plus, Plus. and all the streaming services. And Pornhub. Yeah, and Pornhub. You can watch every episode of The Simpsons on Pornhub. Download Tell them the History Boys set you. <laughs> D- download code. Yeah. yeah, they're like, this is not going to work. His- <laughs> History anal, and you can get all. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, HBZ666 anal uh, is our offer code for Pornhub this sounds, Premium. This sounds more and more like a scam as we keep talking. Yeah, yeah and if you get more people under you, yeah. then we'll make it money on top of money. It's, yeah. it's actually What dead. you do is you get more people to get log on to Pornhub or Disney Plus, and the more people you get, the, the more money you make. Yeah. Oh, it's did, a funnel. It's not a, a pyramid. Did we say Pornhub and Disney Plus? We meant Dazny Max and Pornhub. <laughs> there are sites that we created. And, yeah. And Netflix. And by G-N-A-T. the way. And AT. And by the way. Netflix. <laughs> if you've ever wanted yeah, to see. It's embarrassing. A sad, desperate man begging for money. Yeah. Uh, it's only Tyler things. right now. Yeah. It's, 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 it's sad. If you ever want to see a on there, middle-aged but, man with a, with, with, without an erection, um, but he's also unclothed. He's yes. trying to get an erection. He's begging, <laughs> Is he? He's begging. He's begging for an erection. <laughs> He's trying to get an erection. <laughs> I was going to say begging for money and it made me laugh so hard. He's trying to get an erection. I can't get hurt in my body. I think there's a niche for that. Oh my god. <laughs> Somebody's gonna like this. <laughs> he oh says it in god. the video. Yeah. Oh my god. It's so another crime, also, that I want to mention that is listed in the 12 tables is uh, using magic on your crops. Oh, yeah. oh no. Uh, that's punishable by crucifixion. Mm-hmm. Sweet. And I, I don't actually know what using magic on your crops is or means, but that's horrifying that, to be accused of yeah, using. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> yeah. where it's, like, it's kind of a bit of a loophole to be like, I don't like my neighbor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got a bigger harvest than me. Well, they probably yeah. believed in magic. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's... They and did. they didn't have, like, the way we view, you know... I'm not saying our system's perfect, but the idea of innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That didn't exist. So right. it's like, you're accused of, you know, right. crop magic. Bippity boppity boop. You're crucified. So wait, they didn't have, uh, they didn't yeah. have like a David Blaine style character being like, like, look again on your crops, and then all their crops are bigger, and there's one guy in the crowd who's like, damn, 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 I can't believe this. <laughs> yeah, and then he <laughs> stares into the camera yeah. like, what? Yeah, what? what? Magic. <laughs> it's yeah. a bibbidi-bobbidi-boo, and I know that from yeah. Dragon Ball Z. They're mm. named after. Yes. I know that, that. F- from, uh, what's it? Cinder- bibbidi-bobbidi-boo. Cinderella? Cinderella. 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 Yeah, yeah, the yeah, characters yeah. bibbidi-bobbidi-boo in Dragon Ball Z are named after that. Yes. Oh, that's fucking nuts. I mean, everyone, kind of. But so many people are named after fucking vegetables. Like, whatever. This is true. This is true. Kakarot. Uh, 
lesser crimes came with uh, you know confiscation of property, banishment from Rome, or as little as paying a fine. Okay. Right? So it kind of went all the way down. You cast magic on your crops? That's fine. That's a crucifixion. That's a fiction. fiction. No, that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, cast, cast magic on a crop? That's crucifixion. You fuck my wife? That's a fine. <laughs> Fair enough. The Twelve Tables also covered marriage law, inheritance, guardianship, and funeral rites. So, like, it went pretty in-depth, you know? Cool. A very important detail covered in the Twelve Tables was also the sanctity of the subpoena. Which is a ah. new thing. So oh. if you're, a, if somebody accuses you of a crime, you can be summoned to appear in court, mm-hmm. and you have to go. You got served. Yeah. So that that's a th- something that that is here, which is. Uh, so we had the the first process servers yeah. existing in that yeah. point in time. <laughs> yeah. It's like yes, Seth Rogen like, at the beginning of uh, Pineapple, Pineapple Express. Express. Yes. Yeah, the Pineapple Boys. <laughs> <laughs> now these laws were integral to the Roman education. So, like, if, if you were going to school in this time, you would have been taught these things, and you would have memorized these things. A big reason why they didn't really write them down anywhere else is because everyone already knew them, you oh, know? nice. So it was, like, simple and straightforward. It wasn't like yeah. a, a... It was pretty... Si- yeah, yeah, from what I get. Like, like, why can't we, just, like, have, why can't we just have a handshake deal, you know? <laughs> yeah. Why do we have to have, bring pay, pen and paper into this? Yeah. Well, and it's it's not something like... <laughs> hate to bring this up, but in the 25th Amendment, if a election is contested, that the vice president will count the votes. It's like, okay, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. You know, it's nothing like that, you yeah. know? Again, it's like actions and consequences is well, primarily sure. what this is. Well, why that, would you bring that up? Yeah, I, mean, I, don't uh, I don't know why. I, would, uh, I, I think I America is number one right now. We're great. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. yeah. yeah. Smooth sailing ahead. <laughs> <laughs> This was used as a basis uh, of government in later societies, most notably the United States of America, which we did talk about earlier. Because Rome had pretty much always been a martial-focused society, a military society, it had sought to expand into neighboring lands and cities, enveloping other peoples and cultures who would eventually Romanize. But they're just starting to do this in this in this time frame. So there's the Etruscans at this point. Emperor Claudius, Caligula's uncle, was yeah. the last known speaker of Etruscan. Mm. Uh, he did this whole work on Etruscan that if we had today would be like a holy grail for historians because it's all totally lost. Oh, you got your own alphabet? Romanize it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there was also the Latins, which was a different group entirely, but was absorbed by the Romans. They like the salsa music. It's like the Anglos and the Saxons. <laughs> yeah. At this time, Rome was a mixture of Latin, Etruscan, Sabine, Oscan, and of course, the Greek cultural elements, uh, as is evident in their language, writing, architecture, and religious icons. And much of early Roman history is fighting and absorbing the various peoples of Italy into Rome. And they would eventually, again, just Romanize, just become that, because it was sort of an amalgamation of a lot of different things taken from each each culture. Their primary cultural export was their, or their primary export was their culture, is what I meant to say. Yes, yes, absolutely. Reminds me of something. Can't remember In a why. violent way. Or, yeah, it reminds me of a different place that, that is based on this, yeah. mm. that I'm sitting in right now. Zach's house. No, yes. I'm kidding. This <laughs> uh, die. And this is how we got different types of pizza. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's where pizza comes from. Yeah. This understandably caused animosity between the various <coughs> tribes of modern day Italy and the Romans, necessitating hundreds of years of military engagement, offensive and defensive. It's because of this that there was a strange clause in the Roman law that said in times of great need and emergency, whether it was in defense of Rome militarily from foreign invaders or for domestic unrest, the Senate could elect a dictator or as they would call it a praetor maximus who would serve a term of six months to fix a specific problem. There was an emergency in Rome. Mm. Uh, A a six month dictator. That's, Very, very fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was only in times of great need. Like what happened with Palpatine. (laughs) I am the Senate. Uh, Oh, uh, we already did that, Joe. (laughs) A 
A, a, a dictator just means person who makes decisions. <laughs> yeah. He dictates. Uh, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. A dictator could swiftly, and as they saw fit, make whatever decisions that they wanted to without any debate from anyone else. They could appeal to the dictator, you know, if it's yeah. something that they thought was not correct, but the dictator didn't have to listen. Yeah. And they took full control of the military and everything in order to fix whatever specific problem it was. So uh, what kind of experts do you get to do this kind of job? You would get p- patricians. Mm. Okay. You get patricians. You would elect Never a patrician. Never plebeians. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Never. Those guys are idiots. That's Not why in this they're time. plebeians. Not yeah. in this time in Rome. We oh. didn't teach them how to read, so they don't know how to read, you idiots. <laughs> it's like, if they weren't so lazy, they wouldn't be plebeians. Yeah, right. Now, the limitation of this office was that the dictator was not allowed to out- act outside of the specific emergency that they were elected to deal with, right? But it was sort of a, mm-hmm. hey, you can't do that. Oh, yeah? No. Kind of yeah. a thing, you know? A-, a lot of power was given to this person on faith. They're you know like, what I mean? Please don't go too far. Please don't do that. After their term was up and the emergency was dealt with, or their term was up and they maybe got someone else, the elected dictator must step down after their turn. Can I have a question here? Yeah. How, like, do you know if there's any cases where the dictators would vocally try not to give up power, even though... Oh, yeah. Okay. That's one of the biggest turning points in world history, is when that happened. Okay. I'll get to that. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure. Yep, yep, yep. So Lucius Quintus Cincinnatus... Uh, Cincinnatus means... The curly haired. Ah. That wasn't uh, everyone. Was uh yeah, right. I've seen the statues. Yeah. He was a <laughs> he was a patrician born uh somewhere around five nineteen BCE in the last decade of the Roman kingdom. So he was the first generation of people that didn't live under the Roman monarchy. He lived his whole life under the Roman Republic. The generation before him had remembered the civil wars and the you know, tyrannical Roman kings, some of them. Mm-hmm. Whereas he did not. He did not live underneath that. Uh, so that's that's something that people point to. Well, if you grew up in a time of peace, it, it probably... Not necessarily time of peace. Time of the Republic. Well, time of the... Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know. I... When you grow up in the mid-90s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you grow up... Yeah, you grow up yeah. in the 90s. That's That's kind of... Your view of of the world, not a lot of conflicts if you live in America. And well, think, of, think about the first generation of people that were born in America underneath the Republic of America. Yeah. Right? They didn't. They, they never had a king. Yeah. You know, they, they were never a colonist, right? They were always an American, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. Mm-hmm. So being a patrician, Cincinnatus was indeed rich. Nice. And because of that, he was conservative, mm. uh, not wanting to give any of the patrician power over to the plebs. Yeah. Because, again, that, that was a constant push and pull, you know, plebeians versus patricians just trying to get more power. Because the plebeians were always like, if we can never be a patrician, yeah. how can we ever make the many decisions or have a say in any of the many decisions that you constantly make for us, but we have no say in that? Yeah. How can we possibly do that? And they're like, Psh, go away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? They're like, you don't get to make decisions because you're a plebeian. And they're like, yeah. but I can never be a patrician, so I can never make decisions. They're like, they're like yeah. exactly. If yeah. you were born intelligent, you wouldn't have been born a plebeian. Yeah, right. Now, during uh, this time of sort of domestic unrest between the patricians and the plebes, uh, Cincinnatus would become a replacement consul because the consul before him uh, was murdered during some of this unrest. So some people say he may have taken it illegally, but he became a consul. And when he did that, he really ignored any of the plebeians' demands yeah. and anything like that because, of course, he doesn't want to give away power that he, yeah. that he has, right? I mean, it makes sense for them to complain and it also makes sense for him to be like, no, yeah, you know, regardless of how you feel about that. You're like, uh, it's not. not, the conflict isn't 100% over, so I think you should probably keep me around just a bit longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the plebeian's argument was basically like, 
like I kind of touched on this before, but if if we can't marry into your families, then how can we ever, yeah. ever even hope? You can't, right? And they were like, that's the point. That's mm-hmm. the whole point. We don't right? want it. We don't want it. Right. They're like, we're the unwashed masses. Let us marry your daughters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. She's going to marry her brother like yeah. is the tradition of yeah. the time. <laughs> like God you intended. You animals. <laughs> Jupiter intended. Yeah. yeah. You you could marry second cousins, but first cousins was was looked down upon in mm. Rome. Just just want to make that clear. Looked Look down upon, but it wasn't. Yeah. Punishable. Not illegal. Not yeah. illegal. Yeah, it was just like, oh. Ugh. No, you. It was an ew. It was an <laughs> ew. <laughs> yeah. For uh, sure. Uh, I like how you did a I Love Lucy. Just, ooh. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Tug of my collar, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Uh. So th- this did cause a lot of uh, domestic unrest and violence in Rome, and like the plebe- plebeians even like, you know, took one of the hills of Rome. And th- what happened was, is like groups of younger patricians, they formed street gangs, and went out and beat up plebeians, and was trying to like take down their whole. You know, making them try to shut up, basically. Yeah. Mm. We're going to cut you, baby. Ha! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Think of, uh, snapping in the alley yeah. and when you're doing their songs. Switchblades. I yeah. was thinking of uh, Clockwork Orange, where they beat yeah. up the homeless guy at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. The only, you got to remember, like, these are almost like the bullies from the ski movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, like, they're rich kids, <laughs> yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, these this are rich kids. This is our mountain, man. Yeah. Skiers only. We don't like, like that snowboard. My dad owns a dealership. Come on, yeah. Sheila. We're going. Yeah. <laughs> Thad. <laughs> <laughs> we're going back to Oxford together. Even if you're a poor kid on Ski Mountain, you're still richer than actual poor people. Just yeah. saying. Mm-hmm. All right. You guys remember Johnny Tsunami? Yeah. Check that out on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> and, and use the product code SHILL. <laughs> <laughs> Among these these gangs of patricians was Cincinnatus's son, Queso. Ooh. Queso? Well, K- C A E S O. Queso. Yeah. So, you could all honestly you could pronounce it say so if you wanted. I want it. But if, if, queso. if you say so, I'm calling him queso. Ah, nice. Ah, you Very got nice. it. You got it. I'm here all week. <laughs> <sighs> he was like, because it was of the time, he was like, yo, want some olives and cheese? And everyone's like, eh, this is all right. I feel like it could be better. <laughs> when you wrote that, you knew we were going to be like, I cheese, did. right? I did. I did. Yeah, we're There's no way of getting sauce. around that. Queso was charged with murdering mm. a plebeian. That's a serious crime. Yeah. Oh, is it? Murder. Yeah. Even if it is a plebeian. Uh, was it's it like de- running death over by a diarrhea? dog in your car. Like, <laughs> that's the no. equivalent. <laughs> it's like a white guy killing a black guy. <laughs> whoa. It's fucked whoa, up. Whoa. <laughs> Hot button issue. That's yeah. also totally true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I got nothing. It's not false. <laughs> well, okay. First false. of all, like, what? Okay, so like, what was their criminal record before the crime? Ah, uh, Jesus, I see. The white guy or the so black only... guy? Uh, the black guy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah no, the white guy. I don't care about the white guy. But yeah, what was the yeah. black guy's criminal record <laughs> before it happened? Uh-huh. Yeah. What, what was the plebeian's uh, <laughs> oh, record before it happened? Right, like, right, right. How dare you say this about the white man? Yeah, like, don't. It, do not bring yeah. his. Criminal Maybe he record. did it for a reason. Do not bring his credi- criminal yeah. record into it. God, drives He's a disbarred lawyer with a prescription pill problem. He's an upstanding member of society. Yeah. He was the good guy with a gun. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. The black guy got a traffic ticket one time. Yeah. Nobody to admire. Yeah. We thought his $20 bill wasn't real. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> yeah. Jesus fucking That's Christ. our fucking state, guys. That is America that we live in. I just want you, want, so want you to remember that. It's uh, a lot like this here in Rome. You remember I just want you to remember. Uh, peacefully uh, uh, protested uh, that, and uh, in, for, in the Washington D.C. and the president had uh, the Capitol Police uh, fire oh, on dude, them. So they got tear gas in like five minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a Lafayette Square. Yeah. yeah, Lafayette Square. Yeah, a human rights issue, not a political one. So Keep that it, in the back of your mind. 
if any of our uh, international listeners out there could uh, sponsor us uh, to, to get us out of this hellhole. Especially if you live in New Zealand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah please. Thomas, we're looking at you. Yeah. yeah. Figure yeah. it out, bud. I Come know on, you, figure it out. Dude. I know yeah. you can do it. We Forge love, those papers. We love the Lord of the Rings films. <laughs> I couldn't even say it with this straight face. Uh, I was going to say we love the Lord of the Rings films and the other things. And the rest has. of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love Lord of the Rings. I love... Peter... Jack 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 New Zealand All Blacks. Go, go, All Blacks. Yeah. That, that's rugby team. Yeah. I yeah. like Flight of the Concord. I, I like that. Yeah. And it's uh, also, um, it's, uh, I would say, implicitly race, race, race charged, and I'm, but I'm still behind it anyway, so I'm not racist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you live in New Zealand, we're going to crash on your couch. Yeah. For six months. And we're, ever. And we're least. constantly going to be making eggs in your kitchen talking about how much we like the Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> I hope was you guys... Lord of the Rings made over there? Yeah. No. Was I... it made over there? No. Hey, can you take us to Hobbiton? Hey, can you... Where's Hobbiton at? Do Is you... this Hobbiton? What? No. no Are dude. you Flight of the Concords? Yeah. <laughs> Where's Gondor? I want to go to Gondor. Yeah. That's how we'll be. We'll be. It'll like be that. a joy. You guys are going to have such a good time hanging out with us. Uh, we're not like other Americans, I swear. Yeah, yeah. nothing like that. Because they don't... Whatever be... else they say. Yeah. Anyway... <clears throat> So Queso was arrested for murder. Sources vary on ultimately what happened to Queso, uh, whether he was executed, banished, or went into hiding. But the important part to remember is that Cincinnatus was, because, you know, it's his son and he kind of went went to bat for his son, because uh, he could, because he's a patrician. He was either fined heavily, leaving him with almost no money, or that... Uh, he used nearly all of his money to ensure that Queso would be banished and not executed. Either way, this whole thing left him without any money. Ah. Is, is history silent on exactly how he killed him or what happened? There's stories. Uh, one of them is that he was executed in the tr- uh, in the Roman fashion where he kneals down oh, and no, no. I puts mean, his like head down the, and they the stick The that Queso killed. Oh, yeah, it, completely silent. Because nobody cared. He hit him with his car. Yeah. Something. I did don't did it with his truck. Yeah. He, had a Ford he backed F-150. over him with his Ford F-150. That's a paddling. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, he didn't do it on accident. <laughs> he did it on purpose. He, was, he had a rear camera. Yeah, and this episode sure. is brought to you by Ford. The Ford F-150 has the biggest towing capacity of any truck it's ever. It's a Cummins or, diesel, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it has a Hemi? Or yeah, something like that? It's got a Hemi in there or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so buy it, I guess. It's clear that we're just repeating <laughs> buzzwords from commercials. You get it Ford Escape hybrid. Go to, to Toyota. All the features. Or ford yeah. or whatever the fuck. Yeah, well, the, the Ford Escape hybrid gets as good gas mileage as the Fusion, just so you all know. I did not know that. No, so I don't know. That's what the guy told me when he sold it to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed and he laughed. Like, paid for gas insurance. Yep. Uh. Now, some say that the whole story itself, which in a way shows, in a way it's like Roman propaganda that's trying to show the integrity and morality of Cincinnatus. They say because of this, that's probably all bullshit. Who knows? This is kind of just what we have. We kind of got to go with it, right? Cincinnatus retired from public life to his farm on the outskirts of the city of Rome, which modern day... Would be like right in the middle of Rome. Yeah. <laughs> but it was on the outskirts. But it's like a rich then. guy farm? Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess so. It, it was uh, it was near the Tiber River. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that tells me it's pretty damn close to the to, to Rome itself. Yeah. It's prime real estate. Was was Because was he out there like sowing the grains and yeah. sweating in he the sun? chopping yep. wood. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah he's so chopping this, wood. Like, this is where that trope it, comes yeah. from. It, of the guy like chop a wood and so for them though it was Cincinnati at his plow yeah yeah because they found him while he was plowing oh so he's out uh, there plowing yeah you know I mean? plowing somebody's <laughs> wife um, and they're like we need you back and he's like I gave up on Rome and Rome gave up on me yeah exactly that's yeah that's the story that's where this comes <laughs> from yes exactly cool now he had planned on living. A, a quiet life for the rest of his life, like Dexter. on the farm, on the farm, presumably growing cabbages. Mm. I, I think is what people 
think he was growing there. Mm-hmm. Doesn't necessarily matter, but I don't know. What else are you going to grow? Then Showtime <laughs> Pro Max needed him to come back and do a revival, so yep. here he is. <laughs> and they hope that they uh, fix that awful finale. Yeah, they're like, the finale last time wasn't good and it made the fans mad. Can you come back and do another season? And Cincinnati was like, fucking rock and roll, let's go. <laughs> I was right in the middle of piling some cabbage, but uh, if you I guess your I mean. sister can wait. Yeah. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. So in the meantime, and we're talking, this is 458 or 457 BCE, because remember it goes backwards to one. Yeah, to one. Right. Right. Okay. Let me get Negative JC. numbers. I get it. Yeah. It's not based off, off of Jesus no, in any shape or form. Well, but. I mean... Uh, we both choose to believe different facts, so well, um, you know, uh, whatever. Augustus Caesar is the one that that switched it over. Big and, Jesus and guy. it's it, it's pretty agreed upon. Even people that believe that Jesus existed, that Jesus existed during the reign sometime of uh, Tiberius, which was like tw- twenty some years long, so somewhere in there. Anyway, no, potato, potato. That's <laughs> not potato, potato. Anyway, boil them, mash them, stick. What's AD too. stand for, Tyler? Yeah, um, 80s. Um, uh, isn't it like uh, Anno Domini or something there you like go. that? Good yeah. job. It's not close. after death. At least you know that. All right, all right. Anyway, it's only after death if you're Biggie Smalls. <laughs> <laughs> Around 458, 457, uh, the neighboring Equi is how I heard it pronounced. I do not know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Doesn't I'm going to say that right, right. now. Equi, equi, it's something like that. Equi. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. <laughs> they were uh, a people that had their own written language and spoken language that was completely different than Latin or Greek or anything like that. Actually, there's only two examples of it uh, today. Yeah. So it we, it's completely un undecipherable because we just have two examples of it. Yeah. We have no idea it anything else about it. So uh, those two examples, I'm going to assume, are akin to street graffiti artists where it's just uh, you know a giant penis. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. They're probably, I don't actually know what they are, but they're probably receipts. They're descriptions of genitals. They're okay. probably receipts. Every time we find like old inscriptions of stuff. Yeah. It was an invoice or something? It's usually a receipt. Okay. <laughs> So there you go. So it's just not two twins writing their secret language down and being creepy as shit. Yeah, all of our (laughs) listeners that are twins, you terrify me. Max. Yeah. Yeah, Max. (laughs) Sam. Max and Sam. Max and Sam. Sam. (laughs) You guys are terrifying. They they speak telepathically. It's weird. Strange. It's super weird. You guys know it's weird. So just let us, we're going to let you have your superpower. You let us think it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. But the uh, Equi had never been okay with the Roman yoke. I mean, who wouldn't, right? You're like, like, you know what I want to be? Uh, completely Roman. controlled by the Romans. Yeah, even though I'm not one, right? Yeah. And what the Romans did when, when Rome was founded, and it, it had been a long time since Rome was founded. Oh, it's been founded. But but the thing is, is... Uh, they found it. It'd been, it'd been there for 200 years uh, by this point, at least. But when they when they founded Rome, they realized that because it was a city just founded by, like, brigands and thieves. Yeah. Cool. And shit like that. It was founded on, on that. The yeah. cool guys. So no, no women... and Remus. Yeah, no no women were there. And in order to make their civilization thrive, they needed women. So it's what like did they do? Alaska. So what did they do? They raided tribes around them and took their women. Oh, yeah. Picked up some babes. No one, no one liked that. <laughs> no one liked that. Wait, so they didn't open up uh, like like fifty Starbucks and three Paneras and just call it a day? <laughs> no, nope. They, uh, they didn't have one mall there. It was way yeah. more brutal than that. So the Equi attacked Rome as retribution for their mini incursions into their lands. Uh, now the consul at the time, uh, one of them at least, uh, Lucius. Uh, I'm gonna Malfoy. fuck this up. Lucius Minucius. Esquilinus Augurini, Augurinus. I, I honestly, I, 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 you got me with this one. They hated him back then. They hated him back then. Well, he was the one that was leading the Roman armies to go and meet the Equi people, right? In, in battle, right? That's all you really need to know. The consul was sent down there to deal with it. Guys, don't tell him all my names because I want to slip my throat. So just do the first one, please. <laughs> just call, <laughs> call me Luke. Yeah. Call, yeah. Cool, cool hand Luke. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, 
unexpectedly so, his army was broken, and he didn't have any reinforcements. That's like all they had. If the retreating Roman army didn't receive any reinforcements, and soon, it would mean that Rome was doomed. Because the Equi people would get there and sack Rome. So, the Senate convened and decided to elect, among the patricians, Cincinnatus mm. himself to become dictator of Rome. He's back. He's back. I'm back, baby. So, senators put on their senatorial robes, because you need those for symbolic reasons. Finally covered up their dicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maniacs. <laughs> and they went out to Cincinnatus' farm to tell him and give him the symbolic bundle of rods and axe <sighs> to cool. declare him dictator. They all get in the thing, and the whole time they're like, I hope he says yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's like fucking Bachelor. It's, it's yeah. true. <laughs> it's like, and here's a rose. Yeah, they give him a rose. Will you accept this axe and bundle of sticks or whatever? The the rods of Roman power. Yeah. It's a symbolic thing. Um, this is a symbol there, of all of our penises and you're in control a, of them now, guys. There is a statue of George Washington. I believe it's in the Maryland State uh, Capitol building that shows him leaning next to... It's this pillar thing next to him, and behind him is a plow, Yeah, and he has a gun or something, but he's leaning on this bundle yeah. of rods, and it's to symbolize the Roman rods of power. And I'll get to why there's a statue of George Washington with all of this mm -hmm. imagery. Anyway. Same thing from the books, guys. <laughs> <laughs> because there wasn't Star, there wasn't like Star Wars or pop culture references yet, so they were just like, remember this thing that happened before? Long time ago. It was either that or like Jules Verne or something. <laughs> Not even close. I know. But... <laughs> it's like literally like... A hundred years. 300 years, years before? <laughs> 100 years. Ah, whatever. As these senators approached Cincinnati, he like looked up from his plow... He asked them, he goes, is everything okay? And here's what they said. They told him, hey, uh, you might want to go get your senatorial toga. We have something to tell you. Oh, Jesus. I know, right? <laughs> so is this now, an action movie? Yeah, so so <laughs> then, so then. Uh, they came down in a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Snake. Yeah. Yeah, it's Escape from New York. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he now he either went inside to get it himself or he called for his wife to come and bring Bring him his senatorial robe so he can talk to these guys. Hey, Marge! Where, yeah. where, where's my robes at? Where is my super suit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So once he put on the toga... I'm not talking um, to you without that toga. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, walked up to him and they, they gave him the bundle of uh, rods and the axe and they asked him, you know, would you be dictator? You know, this here's the problem. And he's like, okay. <laughs> So they, they escorted him to the Capitoline Hill and you know, told him the situation. You should have told me on the way. It would have been really convenient. <laughs> <laughs> so Cincinnati, that day, ordered, at least that's what the legend says, right? Like, we don't know. How, again, we don't know if it's that day or if it's days. Anyway, he ordered every able-bodied man of military age uh, assembled and to bring with them, quote, 12 times the amount of encampment spikes that they would normally have with them. What are encampment spikes? Thank you for I was hoping that. you would ask that. So encampment spikes, historians disagree on exactly what they were used for. Most agree that generally they were used to build fortifications. Like tent spikes or? Well, maybe that, but also or the, the, well, we're thinking walls. Yeah. Or or uh like or those weird things that you check see. hedgehogs is what those are called. The, okay. Okay. So yeah. World, yeah. War, that's what World I War II, the, right. the on, on the beaches of Normandy. Right, yes, mm. yes, yes. Those things? Yes. Check hedgehogs is what those check are called. Check hedgehogs. You that's fast. what those are called. That's okay. what they're called. Cool. Or things like that. So uh, folks at home, cavalry, that thing uh, that your obstacles. grandpa died laying over while his guts were spilling out, it's called a check hedgehog. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Don't don't go fast into those. They yeah. they all they, they yeah. all s sort of agree that it is a uh, it's used for fortifications in one way or another, uh, but they probably use them for a lot of things. Uh, he also asked them to bring food for five days. 
with you. And uh, to assemble at the Field of Mars. Oh. Which is so fucking Yeah, it's assembled at the Field of Mars. Yeah. yeah. So we got all of his army together, his new newly minted army. They went, I believe it was south, and he arrived arrived to the beleaguered uh, Roman troops there in a, in a battle which is which would become to be known as the Battle of Mount Algidus. 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 It's one of the one of the Vagitis. four. Honestly, I had a case of the Algidus uh, <laughs> two weeks ago, and it's not fun, guys. Yeah, yeah. Algidus. I'll get him too. <laughs> Does that work? Just, no. No, not even. <laughs> I'll jite us. I'll jite him. I'll, I'll jite you. you. Yeah, I'll, I'll jite you. you. I'll jite them all. I'll jite us. I'll jite you. We're all going to get jited. Whatever yeah. jite means. See, I'll, I'll, I'll get us. I'll get you too. Yeah. 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 I'll get us. You know what? It was forced from the start, and I apologize for everything. <laughs> everything that I've done. I, blame I feel like it's a joke we would have cut, but that I now. blame the now, now there's no looking back. I, I, I blame it all squarely on Zach. That's fair. Yeah. I blame it on the brown guy. You told me to have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> It's all your fault. It's all my fault. (laughs) So, Cincinnatus instantly ordered his men, who had been marching all day, to construct fortifications with their spikes. Yeah. Right? Basically, what they were going to do is wall the equi in. So, there was Cincinnatus on one side, the equi in in between them and the other beleaguered Roman army. Mm. Right? So, they were caught in between. So, if you build, like, fortifications around it, it's easier for you to pick positions and like rain arrows and rocks down on your enemy than you know than it is for them to get through you know so they're walling them inside and then attacking them from both they're like sandwiching their forces in between it, it was going to be a regular Eiffel Tower on the Equity is what yeah. you're saying <laughs> wobbly yes, H yes yeah. Yeah, the wobbly, wobbly H, H the Eiffel Tower <laughs> yeah. no now, a lot of people say the events of this battle probably bullshit. Some e- some people even say this battle may have never even happened. Oh shit. Uh some people go that far. The the main thing is is Cincinnati saved them from some existential military threat. They were triumphant and when Cincinnati got back to Rome, he was met with a legit Roman triumph. Ooh. So we they got the peak Cadillac. They gave him a bunch of sliders. Crushed velvet seats. Yeah. You riding gotta, in the back. You, they said, if the you spill Cadillac. barbecue sauce in the seats, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. There's so many things that go into a Roman triumph. Maybe one of these days I'll explain exactly Including all that Including a pink stuff. Cadillac. Yeah. Uh, with crushed velvet seats. <laughs> it's not a real pink Cadillac. It's a pink Cadillac shell that's carried by slaves. Oh, I mean. Jesus. Well, they didn't have <laughs> a combustion like a engine back then. Yeah, they didn't. So it's so. just the shell, yeah. Yeah. They, they it's a litter. They, they yeah. had the shell figured out. It's the their... body. <laughs> yeah, just the body of the Cadillac. They're like, yeah. someday we'll figure out the way, like, engines work and we'll get this whole thing going. <laughs> yeah. They had crushed velvet but seats. dope as fuck sure. right now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it still has a steering wheel. Do you need some slaves oh, yeah. to carry you to all the diners driving? <laughs> <laughs> To Flavor Town. Take us to Flavor Town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Latin word "triumph" actually translates to, to Flavor, Flavor Town. Town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Cincinnati gets to go to Flavor Town. Yeah, big town. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So after which, Cincinnati resigned the office of dictator for the peace, safety, and overall good of Rome, and returned to his farm. And this is why we remember Cincinnati. It's because it's, he gave it up? Yes, because there's nothing to say you don't have to. You know, yeah. there, there's nothing... It's expected that you give it up. Yeah. But there's nothing in play... Like, you control the whole army. Yeah. You control everything, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You don't have to give well, it it's up. it's like that whole you thing... You do not have to do that. People say is when... It's like anybody who wants to be president shouldn't be president. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes, course, exactly. That we wouldn't have any presidents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, Cincinnati is like like Chris when it comes to playing chess. Like he doesn't know how to think ahead. I don't. He's just yeah. like, you know what? I did my job. Good to go. Yeah. Good to go back to the farm and, and bang my wife. Yeah, I can't. Wait, even, I could have kept power. Yeah, I yeah. can't even do those tile puzzles. So yeah, yeah. 
Chris is like, move the palm forward, get out the queen, get the job done, and then go back to hanging out. Or like, kick the board over. That's how you fucking yeah. win. Well, fair enough. <laughs> I ain't no... You, you punch the nerd in the mouth that you're playing with. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh... uh Quinn's Gibbet. Quinn's Gibbet. Gibbet. Uh, now, many say that the story ends here. And I do, so... Well, bye. Good night, <laughs> Good night, folks. Have a good one. Uh, whatever. We're history boys. Yeah. yeah. Whatever I'm we done. do. Really, I lost my head back But... There. Some say <laughs> that the Senate called on him... Again, in 439 BCE, this time to deal with the domestic problem, which was a wealthy plebeian who was trying to buy influential loyalty to ultimately install himself as king of Rome. Hmm. Couldn't Hmm. have that. So they elected him again. Much the same story. He was there. Back on his plow. On his plow, and they came at him again, and he was like, all right. See, that's what we needed. It's like, got... Dude, Donald Trump's trying to be president. We need you to come back and just smack him. Yeah. And he's like, sorry, you don't get to be president. Yeah. And that would have been it. Well. No reality TV stars <laughs> as president here on out. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, please, please not. Yeah, I don't want president situation. I wanted <laughs> President Snooky though. <laughs> that wouldn't be as bad as president situation. My name's President Ryan Seacrest, and I'm going to let you know what senator sings the best. <laughs> Seacrest out. Yeah. I don't Seacrest watch that rally. <laughs> you guys kind of mentioned everyone. That actually everyone. would make it kind of worth it. <laughs> all of the big ones. <laughs> you would end every ones. address so, uh, with that. <laughs> Seacrest out. One nope. of the bachelors. No Chris Harrison. Yeah, President Ooh, Harrison. I kind of wouldn't mind Chris. Wait, Harrison. who's Chris Harrison? He, bachelor, he's, Bachelor. Oh, he's a Bachelor. I, bachelor was, I just said one of the Bachelor bachelors. in Paradise. He's the host of all. He's those part of the Bachelor. Who was, who was yeah. uh, Bachelor Cinematic Universe? Wasn't it Mark <laughs> Mark Wahlberg? Mark, not not the Mark Mark Wahlberg, but Mark, Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg that does uh, Antiques Roadshow, and uh, he did a show called Temptation Island. Ooh, I remember Temptation Island. Mark Wahlberg was the host of that. And it's it's the Antiques Roadshow Mark Wahlberg, not Marky Mark. There's another Mark, Mark Wahlberg? He has to yeah. constantly make that distinction. There's no. no two ways about yeah. it. He's like, yeah. like uh, well, I'm Mark Wahlberg, not no. of the Funky Bunch. Yeah. <laughs> not from Ted. Not yeah. Marky Mark. Not from the other guys. You might get me mistaken as Mark Wahlberg the hunk. I'm Mark Wahlberg with diabetes. It's a different guy. <laughs> <sighs> we should just okay. finish this. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this time, Cincinnatus ordered that the offender be brought to him. Now, while trying to arrest this man, there was a melee. Mm. And, like, the guy was, like, surrounded by these uh, patricians that were, like, trying to get him. And he pulled out a butcher's knife. And he's like, ah, ah. And, like, they're circling ar- around him. And he's, like, slashing at him with a butcher knife. And he, like, ran away and they, like, chased him down. He eventually died in the melee. By his own name. I just feel like, if you're like, <laughs> I don't know I'm going to try to be king. Way. Once you're in a melee in which you pull out a butcher's knife, you're probably never going to be you're king. You're lost. Yeah, you lost. You've yeah. already lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You might as so well just be like... That butcher's knife is a fucking sign eh. of the times. The, yeah. His butcher's it, knife was his Twitter. It's almost, yeah. it's <laughs> it's almost like, like if... You want to change an election, so you storm a Capitol building. Yeah, it, it's you kind of fucked yourself. Yeah, you kind of shot yourself. If you if you weren't fucked before, you certainly mm. are now. You yeah. keep <laughs> referencing this fi- fictional it's thing, a, like a I, hypothetical I, scenario. I yeah, yeah. thought of myself. It's like it happened a couple of days ago. Well, it, I thought but, it was something off of Disney Plus yeah. for our sponsors. Oh yeah, it was uh, Star 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 Wars getting the Capitol. No, it's a it's a Disney <laughs> show uh, starring uh, Mickey, Dove Cameron. Oh, and Mickey Mouse. And Mickey Mouse. And Mickey and, Rooney. <laughs> and Mickey Rooney. <laughs> and Hades from the Hercules Disney movie. Yeah. Uh, 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 James J- Woods. James Woods. Ah, uh, world famous pedophile and video drum star James Woods. He, he's not a pedophile. Is he's he? Tra- he's tried to fuck young chicks. Well, uh, how what? young? How young? Yeah, uh, she, she was she was she was seventeen then. at the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, there's like David Bowie pedophile, also Jimmy Page also? pedophile, which is not John Gagger, John K from yeah. Ren and Stimpy. That's pedophile. a big time pedophile. Oh, that oh, guy's that a guy. big time pedophile. Groomed young women like yeah. who are fans of the show. He's like James hey, Woods is just a piece of shit. No, no, let's uh, be real. There's uh, an actor, and I can't remember what show she's on, but she's like, I remember being like sixteen, and James Woods and his friend were like. Hey, you should come with us to Vegas. And they're like, we're only 16. And he goes, even better. 
And Ew. she called him out on Twitter about it, and he was just like... He's like, fake news. I... The radical left. The radical left. <laughs> <is running back. laughs> and that's the reason why he's been like a weird social media pariah for like the last like five years. Well, the man that wanted to be the new king of Rome was murdered, was killed. Cincinnatus went back home. You know, it was like, well, that's that, I guess. <laughs> uh, but a lot of people are like, that probably didn't happen uh, at all. Oh, really? Or it was a different Cincinnatus. Because the thing is, is like, that's a family name. Yeah. I mean, this was a lot. Well, well, this the, is like... Well, and the thing is, is by this time, Cincinnatus would have been well into his 80s. <laughs> So it's like, come on, dude. <laughs> yeah. One last ride. The I, fact that he's even plowing his field in his 80s, it doesn't make any when sense. You're, uh, <laughs> this is like the 500 BC, right? No, this is in no. 430. It was okay. way before Viagra was invented. So it's around the time of like the Peloponnesian War in Greece-ish. Yeah. I don't remember exactly. It's that decade. It, or it's, t- that, that, that century. Sorry. It's that century. Yes, yes. Because it's like, I feel like Greece was on top then. I don't even know anything about Rome during this this time period. There were a city state. It was just just the republic with the they were slowly expanding. Anyway, yeah, a lot of people just doubt that they would have elected an 80-year-old man again. <laughs> Who does do that? It. You know, it just <laughs> yeah. <It's> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, the reason why the legend of Cincinnati would continue to hold weight throughout history was the res- the restraint and honor and integrity that he showed when he was handed supreme power, and instead of keeping it to wield it for his own gain, he gave it back for the good of his people, the Roman people. It's these morals that Cincinnati exudes that paints an idyllic picture of him as displaying all the qualities of the ideal Roman citizen, the ideal Roman. It, that has all of these qualities it, it embodied in Cincinnati. He's he's their um, George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. George Washington is perfect. The Romans weren't the only ones that thought this about Cincinnati. The leaders of the American Revolution and founding fathers of the United States of America also born into patrician type upper class who were schooled in the classics of the Roman Republic would also remember fondly the leadership of Cincinnati. The general of the Continental Army during the Revolution, and then President George Washington, was called the American Cincinnati. Mm. Huh. Bada bing. Because after the war, he relinquished control of the Continental Army, which he could have absolutely used and wielded as he saw fit because his troops were extremely loyal to him. He could have done that. Instead, he declined. There was even people that wanted him to become king of America, and he declined that. And he went back to his, not farm, that he did the own sowing, as Cincinnati did. He went back to his plantation where he made his slaves work on his yeah. plantation, and he pretended that he was a bit of a Cincinnati character. Let's make let's let's yeah. just be, be be clear with that. Well, okay. So, so as many victories and good things that he do, did, we can't forget that he had slaves. You can't forget that. No, but also don't be afraid needed, of that. He needed to focus on giving up the Continental Army and focusing. On a new kind of breakfast that is disappointing <laughs> and only served at two star hotels. The Continental. The Continental the Breakfast. Con- yeah. It's so is disappointing. This like, yeah. Invented by George it's Washington. Like yeah. Coffee and honestly, you're the most coffee, protein, like maybe some eggs. The, maybe the sh- a hard boiled egg. Yeah. No, chances are scrambled. it's, it's going to be. It's gonna but be mostly sh- fruit. Yeah. Shitty watered down coffee. Fruit and then uh, maybe like a, like a Danish or or sometimes they have a jug of disgusting waffle mix. Yeah, yep. and they have little waffle presses, and it's like if you think I'm getting anywhere near that, you're crazy. That. Yeah, it's a death trap. That looks like fucking disease-ridden major... slime to me. Yeah, I I, I, I would take the uh, instant uh, oatmeal over that. Oh yeah. Oh no. I take almost I anything. The, I over think that. the last uh, continental breakfast I had was in London. Um, Last one I had was at Tyler's wedding. It was right by uh, fucking, uh, <laughs> right by uh, King's Cross. I don't remember the name of the place we're at, but it was like, just like, 
Danny, Danny would always be like, let's get early, up early enough to have the continental breakfast. And I'm like, well, if these people are eight hours ahead and you're wanting me to get up at 7 a.m. their time. Forget that. I'm not I, doing that. I usually would sleep through and Danny would be like, yeah, I had the continental breakfast. And I was like, why don't we just pay for fucking breakfast somewhere else? <laughs> for good breakfast. Yeah, yeah, go to a pub, have a beer, get a full English. Yeah. yeah. Full English. Oh, dude. Full English breakfast. Also, I'm a, more of a fan of the Irish breakfast. Mm. What's the what's the difference? Same thing with whiskey. <laughs> hey. I actually don't know what I'm. I don't remember. I feel like like I love blood pudding. It's delicious. Okay. Oh, okay, that's not for me. But I, I, I feel like people don't like blood pudding because that has the word blood in it. It's delicious. That's why I don't like no, no, the word like pudding in it. I, I, I don't like the taste it. of it. Personally. It's so good. Does like, it taste like a penny? No, no, it doesn't taste like a penny. It tastes like a bag of pennies, it's a meat Jerry. It, 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 it tastes like a disappointing sausage. It's like, like a crumbly sausage. It's like haggis, which is even better. I've never even had that. Haggis is delicious. If I ever go, I will have. When that. people hate on haggis, I'm, it's because they think like, oh, it's made of like, I it's don't know, cooked inside a, it's cooked sheep inside stomach. a sheep's but it honestly, stomach. like. It's just it's just sausage. Like it's a crumbly sausage, and it's delicious. I'd eat it. I would eat it. I you should eat it. I if, wouldn't if eat you it didn't here. Know it, if you I wouldn't eat no. it here, I'd only eat it over. If you there. didn't know you were eating haggis, you'd be like, and I, I ordered a pizza with haggis. You'd be like, the sausage on this is delicious, and I'd be like, it's haggis, and you'd be like, oh yeah. Did you eat I probably pizza would. with haggis? Oh yeah. I'd probably oh, be like, really? Yeah. Yeah. Then it's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In uh, Glasgow, yeah. Well, I've never been to Glasgow. It's awesome. I'd love I love to. Scotland. All right, anyway. Uh, well, George Washington would uh, cite Cincinnati as the reason for doing this. You know, he was, again, he was very schooled in, you know, classic Roman literature and history. So he looked up to Cincinnati. What an honorable man who went home and uh, ordered around the human beings that he owned. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's property. Uh, he was uh, a regular daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and another uh, reason for this, everyone back then, because. Roman Republicanism, I guess is what I'll call it, was all the rage during during the American oh, Revolution. Oh, it was in, baby. Yeah, it, it was totally in. So what happened after the war is there was a society created after the American Revolution by like the military officers that had served. And the whole goal behind it was that they're displaying the same qualities that Cincinnatus had. So it's called the Society of the Cincinnati. Mm. And where they, they were military officers, they had served, they were veterans, and now it, it, the whole point was is that they were putting down their guns and returning to civilian life because that's what Cincinnatus would have done. And this uh, society still exists to this day, weirdly enough. Is it like a... a Oh, what do you call it? Like a online fan club? No, no, like it's, a, it's a fraternity, bro. It, it's like a veteran society. I was thinking like they, a fraternity, like an Elks F-O-E? club. Elks club. It's like an Elks club thing. Yeah, but you have to serve. You have to, you know, there there's more requirements. I can't just show up and be like, I want to be on the Elks, and they're like, fill out this the application. Elks? Yeah. And another thing is that named after the Society of the Cincinnati was the city, the boomtown of Cincinnati, cool. Ohio. I've heard great things. Hot day. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of I've fans in Cincinnati and Cleveland, Ohio. They're like, and we're going to make a chili that stands up to the legacy. It's great, Tyler. You should try it out. I, I would totally try their... It, uh, it, no, here's the thing. They're like chili spaghetti? Is that what it is? It sounds... It's pasta. Okay. So you can use any pasta. No. But spaghetti noodles... I are, would use penne, personally. That's my own personal... I, <laughs> Dude, use the corkscrew. Oh, so you. it catches all that. Mm, catches Ooh. all of that. So here's what I'm thinking. It sounds good, but it doesn't sound like... It's not like... It sounds like something that someone would make when they were drunk, and then everyone decided it was like what they were doing. Because it's fantastic. Yeah. Have, well, you can also use macaroni noodles, and that works real well. Or bucatini, because it has the ridges on the outside. Or that. Or yeah, that. Well, I'm just, just going to call it the Cincinnati stew, because it kind of has the alliteration going on. Yeah. 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 Give it a shot. Give it a shot. One of these days. The reverberations of of Cincinnatus are basically after a conflict, especially if it's civil, you know, be, between an, between members of a nation or neighbors, right, that when the conflict is over, you set your guns down and you go back to civil life. That's the whole crux behind, behind Cincinnatus, mm-hmm. right? And so when that happens, it makes for a more... A peaceful society, right? You fight when you have to, because the 
the opposite is a nightmare and right. could spell the destruction of of everything your so whole you're society it's everything like, gen uh, you 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 work as a general and then become the uh, secretary of defense or Right, you become, exactly. Or you're a soldier who becomes when war a is your officer. career, you're always looking for another well, war to fight. Well, I'm, I'm no, I, I'm <laughs> saying that you know you return to something that's not really involved with the martial aspect. Uh, that's the original sort of point, and you do that for the good of the country that you're living in. You don't want to always be a soldier. Is is what this is trying to say. So it's in, the, the legend of Cincinnati is really trying to get across. Mm-hmm. So because, soldiers exist in wartime. Yes. Is the idea. Yes. Because uh, there is historical precedence for someone who does not do like what Zach was ask, asking earlier, does not do what Cincinnati did mm-hmm. lay down the weapons after the emergency is over. Like Palpatine. Yeah. In 49 BCE, long after Cincinnati, about char- 400 years. Yeah. A charismatic and unmatched general crossed the Rubicon River and took Rome by force and declared himself dictator for life. And that man's name was Julius Caesar. Oh, ah. shit. I thought you were going to say Nixon. <laughs> I was going to say Jesus Christ. <laughs> Superstar. JC? Superstar. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So there you go. He's yeah. gonna get stabbed. Uh, this will be a good setup for uh, the next episode that, that you, we might have. That you got in the pipeline. That we got brewing. Yeah. So you guys have a little tasty taste of what's to come. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of history, one might say. Yeah, yeah. for your boys. The next episode is gonna be about history. It is. So, Turns out uh, that's uh, what we do around here. <laughs> uh, again, this is uh, season two, episode one. The Revenge of the Sith, the prequel. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And that also reminds me, uh, if you guys like history, you're going <laughs> to love the legacy of all the great content on Disney+. Plus. Uh, <laughs> they got Mickey and Goofy and, you know, Donald, the whole yeah. gang, and Ariel's and if there you really want to swimming look, around. You so. want to appreciate what uh, Inch Rome has to offer, go down to your local Olive Garden. Yeah. Uh, they got unlimited <laughs> soup, salad, breadsticks, not Parmesan. You don't get unlimited Parmesan. <laughs> They Don't got, be an asshole. At yeah. some point, the fucking waiter's arm is going to get tired. It's yeah, that's that. fake news. It's Im- it's implied that it's you got fake news. You got to yeah. tell him to stop at some point. It was like, and I I'm I, I'm tired. Some malicious news has come down the pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. It's I did fake not. News. <laughs> I did not get get kicked out of Olive Garden for being drunk and disorderly. Uh, I was drunk and disorderly in I, an Olive Garden. I was asked to leave. I was asked politely. I wasn't thrown out, but I was uh, no longer served due to being overly intoxicated. And one employee... At, uh, 2 p.m. <laughs> one employee that has been reprimanded since, according to my, my sources, did yell at me as I was walking through the parking lot and stay out. And it was offensive, <laughs> but... And stay out. I'm not, I'm not a snowflake... <laughs> I understand, but they have been reprimanded. Well, I was extraordinarily offended that they even asked me to leave because yeah. I have given them a lot of money over the years. Uh, I and I have eaten a lot of unlimited soup, I, salad, and breadsticks. You, you let their you customer service know how much money you've given them over the so, years and how good of a customer you are. I think they really listened. Yeah, yeah. that that that's what uh, that's what companies really respond yeah, to. Yeah, a major uh, uh, as a well. family restaurant chain really cares about one fucking individual. Yeah, yeah. Anytime yeah. you you have a subpar experience at any restaurant chain, be sure to tell them loud and proud on on social media that you will not be their customer anymore. And I bet you. They will bend all of their rules to to suit you. I yeah. bet you that that's what make will a scene in the restaurant. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's yeah. why I'm on social media and be really shitty to your uh, waitresses and waiters. Never be polite to a waiter. Not yeah. only will they give you a gift card, but you can use that gift card. And when they take your bowl in the back, they will open the valve on the cloaca that spills out <laughs> the fucking <laughs> pile of, of carbs and protein that go into the bowl and they will make it double size to make sure you get your fill yeah. America. Yeah. That's if yeah, if, if yeah. you're too nice to these servers they're gonna walk all over you. Yeah. yeah. They might put a piece of broccoli in there. Ugh. You know, maybe you won't get unlimited breadsticks. No. They, they got like, f- oh, we're out of bread. And I was like, well, I just saw you give them bread. 
I was like, well, that was the last time. How about we bring you some fried little donuts? They got chocolate and caramel. You just put it right on top. So or delicious. maybe or maybe these waiters and waitresses are attacking you and they just don't like your face and so they just don't, they don't like, like your you. Political and so the whole stance. and so the How whole time How much of this are we going to cut out? 100%. Yeah. 100% stay. And so the whole time you're thinking like they just didn't like me. They just didn't like me. So I'm going to be mean they to them the whole time. They were discriminating against my political beliefs. Yeah, which they knew uh, that you that you had when you came inside the door. Yeah. But because I'm them because so of the money. hat and the shirt and the flag yeah. on my yeah. car, yeah. yeah, and and the armband. Well, I also I wore a I wore a I mat, think the, the armband was the dead that giveaway. was the dead giveaway. I the wore swastika Trump was a big shirt giveaway. or a Trump flag as a cape when I walked in. Yeah, uh, I didn't like that. <laughs> well, you were served though, anyway, right? You were served anyway. Yeah, until I got too drunk. <laughs> well, it, it didn't help when you started shouting that you wanted a glory hole in the bathroom, but instead of penises, you wanted it to be the breadsticks. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It's that I had already carved the glory hole, mm, and they were upset okay. about that. And I was okay. like, "Well, just put breadsticks through them while I'm taking yeah. a shit." I'm doing you a favor. They I don't. Want, I don't want to take a break from breadsticks while I'm pooping. <laughs> <laughs> it's called carbo loading. <laughs> I'm preparing for a fucking marathon. I'm running a marathon tomorrow. <laughs> and by marathon, I mean I'm going to be on Facebook a long time letting people know about my more controversial <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a- And I'm going to be doing it for 24 hours straight. I'm going to be bouncing from Twitter to Parlor to yeah, Facebook. Yeah. Just using all my ammunition. No, Parlor, t- Parlor's been cut, taken off Google and Apple now. I can only get it on my well, desktop. I don't know if you can still use it, though. You probably just can't download you it. You put it on your do- uh, desktop. It can't mm-hmm. be a mobile thing. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. We gotta, we gotta do something real oh, quick. Oh shit! So, oh, yeah. uh, ring a ding, ding, ring a ding, ding. Oh boy, what's that? What could that be? What is it? It's, 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 it's a telegram. What is, what does this telegram say? Oh my god! Oh shit! It looks like we got a new Patreon, pal. Ring a ding, 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 ding. Who's our new Patreon pal? Our new Patreon pal goes by the name of Carly. What Carly. up, Carly? Carly? Carly, thank you. We love you. Thank you. And if I'm not mistaken, Carly is an educator, she which is... is fucking gratifying to know that an educator would listen to our show. I hope she doesn't teach the History Boys uh, curriculum, but it's kind of awesome. She plays History Boys podcast. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah, gets yeah. wasted on the job <laughs> the entire time. She shows up. She goes, "Don't turn the lights on in the classroom. Just, uh, <laughs> just put on this podcast. You guys are gonna learn about yeah, like, Cincinnatus it. today." Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for subscribing to our Patreon. Um, you're going to get all the cool Patreon stuff that comes with it. And uh, What are those tiers again there, there Zach? All right, we got uh, one one dollar. One dollar, you get access to the fucking uh, Discord. To our, to our Discord. And every month, we like to do at least one Beers with the Boys. Mm-hmm. We'll let you know a week in advance so that you can put the kids to sleep with some chloroform or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, and just hang out with us online and get fucked up, ask us questions, play some games, and, you know, maybe a little quiz show, maybe a little bit of this, that, and the other. I don't fucking know. You know? We like to play it fast and loose when it comes to our Discord stuff. Uh, it's also a great way to uh, ask us questions, uh, ask for a clarification, uh, yeah. probe into our personal lives, uh, mm-hmm. you know. If you have uh, questions about episodes, you can ask me there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or on Twitter, or on Instagram, or whatever the fuck. Exactly. So that, not on Parlor. <laughs> not we. Are, we are not on Parlor. <laughs> We'd be well, banned. We were until they fucking deleted uh, them. Un- until the free speech police came along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's uh, that's for for a buck you get the Discord. Uh, for five bucks you get access to the Discord plus uh, the shout out, which nice. is pretty it's fun. Dope shit. Uh, at ten bucks or higher. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, we have so many good friends who have done that. Uh, what you get is also uh, all of the above, plus access to bonus content. Um, and uh, they range from musical ideas that I've produced uh, regarding Which the show. Which dope, by the way. Um, to outtakes and uh, quiz shows and various other fucking... We're constantly thinking of new ideas. Yeah. yeah we're, new we're, things. Not, we're not trying to do another show, so to speak, with this bonus content. Yeah. What we want is to enhance your experience when it comes to listening to this shit. And if you have ideas 
maybe. If you are a Patreon pal and you have ideas of something you would want to hear, send it to us. We might do it. So I'm just letting you know. I th- I think anybody should be able to... Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. And where could they find us at? They can find us on Facebook, History Boys Podcast. They can find us on Instagram and Twitter. And of course, Patreon, we were just talking about that. Yes. You can email us at historyboyspodcast at gmail.com as well. My name is Jerry Nash. I am a history boy. Thank you so much for listening, as always. Uh, get on and, and follow us and... and Engage with us. We always love hearing from you, even if, if you just want to say hi or something or ask us you know, questions over Facebook or anything like that. We love hearing from you. Please do that. That's super awesome. Um, and I also want to mention something else. You know, we, we have been gone during the uh, holidays, but I do want to mention uh, myself. I am getting married. Whee! Yay! Yay! One so. of us. One of us. <laughs> one of us. Yeah. So I, I'm you're, you're, pretty happy to announce. You're practically that. married, but now I've, I've I've been with Susie for a very long time. I may as well just now we all do the whole, we're all do the whole thing. Ah, uh, say goodbye to your sex life. Yeah, uh, that's Zach. How long have you been with with Liz? Five years now. Okay, mm. I've been I've been with Susie for longer. <laughs> <laughs> he said goodbye to his sex life a long. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much. We love all of our listeners so fucking much. I'm Tyler Armatrout, and I'm a history boy who's hot on the trail of some Cincinnati chili. I'll see you guys next time. (laughs) I'm Christopher Whedon, history boy who's hot on the trail of some criminals that I've been trying to track down. (laughs) (laughs) Not legally. They stole his Cincinnati chili. I do not have I do not have a private investigator license whatsoever. But uh, so I shouldn't have said that. Not a member of law enforcement. Oh no, 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 they wouldn't let me. I tried (laughs) so hard because you were like, I just want a gun. Real bad. Just give me a gun. I want to just shoot. Just give me a gun. I want to kill Antifa so bad. Anyway, (laughs) anyway, Uh, I am uh, Zach. Hot flash mech uh, because I'm going through the, the little menopause yep. there. Ooh, uh, ooh yeah, ooh. not 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 fun. But uh, also a history boy. Love you, bye.